It's funny because when somebody asks me what is a daikini, I always go blank, which I think is actually interesting in terms of what a daikini is. Because a daikini takes you out of words and logos into a direct experience. And so to define the daikini in a way is impossible because she is beyond that and she takes you beyond that. Given that, <laughs> uh, daikini means sky goer or ka, sky and dro is go and ma is, is female. And so they say that she's called that because she moves through space or through emptiness. She's like a messenger of emptiness. Dakinis can be human beings and they can also be deities, wisdom deities. And there's also worldly dakinis who are not human and they're not wisdom dakinis, but they're sort of like kinds of spirits, I guess you could say, uh, that may be partially enlightened, but not entirely. And so there's lots of different kinds of dakinis. What, what I focus on in my work is the wisdom dakinis, the five wisdom dakinis who, who are enlightened. They're, they're equal to Buddhas in terms of their understanding. The dakinis are fierce, generally, not always, but generally they have a fierce aspect or maybe a semi, semi-wrathful aspect. And so that is, uh, that, that uh, fierce energy to me is interesting because of the way the fierce feminine has been denied. That um, if you're a fierce woman, you're dangerous and you become the witch or the bitch. And, and so the, the way that Dakinis have that fierceness and the, and the clarity and the wisdom and sort of, I guess you could say, allow that aspect of the feminine psyche, but in a, in a transformed form in, in wisdom, which is always based in compassion and understanding of emptiness, then you have that. So the Dakini, I think a simple way to say what a Dakini is, is a of a conductor or a mediator or a midwife for wisdom. <laughs>